Good morning, Pre-K. So, let's continue on with Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. We're up to chapter eight. Yesterday, we finished chapter seven, which was about that very silly, very strange tea party that Alice went to with the White Rabbit. Oh, excuse me, it was with the Mad Hatter and the March Hare. And they were both extremely funny, goofy, strange. I didn't know what was happening and I don't think Alice did either. So let's start chapter eight, The Queen's Croquet Ground. So this is interesting because this little picture are pictures of playing cards, like the kind that you play games with. But these playing cards have legs and heads and arms. So I guess we'll find out about them. A large rose tree stood near the entrance of the garden. The roses growing on it were white, but there were three gardeners busy painting the roses red. Why, they look just like playing cards, thought Alice. This is very strange, and she went closer to watch them. Look out now, Five, don't splash paint on me like that. I couldn't help it, Five said. Seven bumped my elbow. Seven looked up and said, that's right, Five, always blame it on others. Goodness. You'd better not talk, Five said. I heard the queen say yesterday, you deserve to be beheaded. What for, said the one who'd spoken first. That's none of your business too, said Seven. Yes, it is his business, said Five, and I'll tell him. It was for bringing the cook tulip roots instead of onions. Seven flung down his brush and had just begun. Well, of all the unfair things, when his eye fell suddenly upon Alice, as she stood watching them, he stopped himself quickly. The others saw her too, and all of them bowed. <clears throat> Could you tell me, please, said Alice, why you're painting those roses? <clears throat> Two began in a low voice. Well, you see, miss, this should have been a red rose tree, and we put a white one in by mistake, and if the queen found out, we would have our heads cut off. So we're doing our best to. At that moment, five, who'd been looking around the garden, yelled out, the queen, the queen. The three gardeners instantly threw themselves flat upon their faces. There was a sound of many footsteps, and Alice looked around to see the queen. So here is Alice talking to these very silly playing cards. And now, First came ten soldiers carrying clubs, who also looked like cards, with their hands and feet at the corners. Next came ten courtiers, decorated all over with diamonds. They walked two by two as the soldiers did. And after these came the royal children, with hearts upon their garments. There were 10 of them and they were jumping along hand in hand. Next came the guests, mostly kings and queens, and among them, Alice recognized the white rabbit. It was smiling at everything that was said and went by without noticing her. Then followed the knave of hearts carrying the king's crown on a red velvet cushion. And last of all, at the end of the grand procession came the king and queen of hearts. Alice wasn't sure if she should lay down on her face like the gardeners. She could not remember a rule about laying down for a procession. And besides, she thought, what's the use of a procession if people have to lay down upon their faces? Then they're not able to see it. So she stood where she was and waited. When the procession came to Alice, they all stopped and looked at her. Then the queen said, who's this? To the knave of hearts, who only bowed and smiled in reply. Fool, said the queen, tossing her head and turning to Alice. What's your name, child? My name is Alice, your majesty, said Alice very politely, as she thought. Why, they're only a pack of cards. I needn't be afraid of them. And here's a picture of all the cards marching along. It's 
very strange, isn't it? The queen should have people, but she doesn't. She has cards. Oh, and here she is. It's the queen of hearts with the king, the knave, and all the playing cards. And she's asking Alice, what's your name? I'm not sure she's nice. We'll have to find out about this. And who are these, said the queen, pointing to the three gardeners who were laying face down in front of the rose tree. How should I know, said Alice, surprised at her own courage. It's no business of mine. The queen turned red with fury and screamed, off with her head, off. Nonsense, said Alice very loudly, and the queen was silent. The king laid his hand upon the queen's arm and quietly said, my dear, she's only a child. The queen turned angrily away from him and said to the knave, turn them over. The knave carefully turned them over with one foot. Get out, said the queen in a loud voice and the three gardeners instantly jumped up and they began bowing to the king and queen, the royal children and everybody else. Stop that, screamed the queen. You're making me dizzy. She turned to the rose tree and said, what have you been doing here? Your majesty, said the two, going down on one knee as he spoke. We were trying, I see, said the queen, who was looking at the roses off with their heads. The royal group left. Three of the soldiers stayed behind to execute the gardeners who ran to Alice for protection. You won't be executed, said Alice and she put them into a large flower pot that stood near. The three soldiers wandered about looking for them and then quietly marched off after the others. Are their heads off? shouted the queen. Their heads are gone, your majesty, the soldiers, the soldiers shouted in reply. Can you play croquet? The soldiers were silent and looked at Alice as the question was meant for her. Yes, shouted Alice. Come on then, yelled the queen and Alice joined the procession. It's a nice day, said a voice at her side. It was the white rabbit peeping into her face. Very, said Alice, where's the duchess? Shh, said the rabbit. He looked over his shoulder and then he raised himself up on tiptoe so he could whisper in her ear, she's been arrested and will be executed. What for, said Alice. And here's Alice hiding all the gardeners in a pot. This queen, she's quite a mess, isn't she? Just really, really crazy. Ooh, let me check here. Oh, very long chapter. So we will, we'll read one more page and then we'll stop here. What for, said Alice? Did you say, what a pity, the rabbit asked. No, I didn't, said Alice. I said, what for? She boxed the queen's ears, the rabbit began, and Alice laughed. Shh, the rabbit whispered. The queen will hear you. You see, the duchess is late, and the queen said, Get in your places, shouted the queen. People ran all around in all directions, and they finally settled down, and the game began. Alice had never seen such a strange croquet ground. There were lots of hills and holes, and the balls were live hedgehogs. And the mallets, that's the little hammer thing you used to hit the ball, were live flamingos. You know, those are those great big pink birds with the long necks. The soldiers stood on their hands and feet to make the arches to hit the balls through. Alice tried to hold her flamingo still, but it kept twisting around so it could look at Alice. She couldn't help laughing, and when she finally got the flamingo to hold still, she looked down and found that her hedgehog had run away. <laughs> it was a hard and confusing game. The players played at the same time. No one took turns like they were supposed to, and they argued about everything, and the queen went stomping around screaming, off with his head, off with her head, every minute. Alice began to feel very uneasy. So we'll stop there. This is the silliest game. Can you imagine trying to hold a bird and use it to play with? And 
the hedgehog was really smart to run away, wasn't he? This is all very fantastic. Like a silly dream. And here's Alice holding the flamingo. There's her hedgehog starting to run away. And I don't know if you can see, but here are all the cards bending over. So you were supposed to be able to roll your ball, which would have been a hedgehog, through the card and out the other side. Just goofy. Okay, have a great weekend. We will finish this chapter. Mm, it's quite a bit of it. On Monday, and then we'll be up to chapter nine. Getting really close, guys. Hope you're enjoying this really, really silly story. And I'll see you Monday. Bye.